you. It is, it is wonderful to be with you. It is wonderful to uh, be able to share today. And uh, although we are seem to be limited by the movements that we have, uh, we are still able to connect with each other through this incredible means that is the internet. And uh, if you had had stock and shares in this medium before, uh, if you had bought shares at Zoom, today you would be millionaire. We would not know that we would be using this as often as we do. And it's a good means. Uh, we maintain every, uh, we maintain communication with everybody. So the Shabbat, I'm not speaking from a pulpit or I'm not speaking from what I usually speak from. But I'm I'm here in my office. This is not, this is a real uh, bookshelf, okay? This is not a uh, uh, just a backdrop. And my office is my holy place where I study, where I preach. Now it's been turned into into a studio because I'm preaching and recording lectures and, and messages. Uh, today I want to share with you some thoughts from the from the Word of God, and if you are able to see that. Uh, I don't know if our, we have the means of doing this, but I was trying to. Uh, do you see that? The message today. We've got it, We've got it David, yes. Okay. okay. The resurrection of Yeshua is the foundation of our faith. Last Sunday, we celebrated the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And uh, regrettably, it's been called now Eastern. Regrettably, has fallen behind uh, other holidays. Yet, the resurrection of Yeshua is the foundation of our faith. All that we do, all that we believe, all that we stand for is based on the fact that Yeshua rose from the dead. And our faith is not based on the fact that I wear a kippah or that we, we sing messianic songs or and we use messianic terminology or that we meet in Shabbat instead of Saturday. No, that's not what the gospel says. That's not what the New Testament talks about. The New Testament says very clearly that everything that we believe is based on the fact that Yeshua rose from the death. And I'm going to be reading a passage that is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And uh, if you can follow along. Uh, and this is what the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Corinth. Now I make known to you brethren the gospel which I preached to you. Which also you received. In which also you stand. By which also you are saved. If you hold fast to the word which I preach to you, unless you have believed in vain. So for the Apostle Paul, Rob Schultz is going to say that our faith has no meaning whatsoever unless we stand on the fact that Yeshua rose from the dead. And verse 3 of the same chapter, 1 Corinthians 15 says, For I delivered to you as of first impost importance what I also received, that Messiah Yeshua died for our sins according to the scripture, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And then he appeared to Peter, then to the 12. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren, most of whom still remain. Some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And Paul says, and last of all, as, an, as one Untimely born, he appeared to me. Now, he says, whether then it was I or they, so we preach, so you believe. Now, he continues verse 12. If Yeshua is preached that, has, that he has been raised from the dead, how some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Yeshua has been raised. And if Yeshua has not been raised, our preaching is in vain. Your faith is also in vain. In other words, if Yeshua is not raised from the dead, you might as well go and watch TV or spend time with the grandchildren because all this makes absolutely no sense. 
Moreover, verse 15, we are found to be false witnesses of God because we testified against God that he raised Yeshua, whom he did not rise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Yeshua the Messiah has been raised. Now, if Yeshua has not been raised, our faith is worthless. We are still in our sins. Then those who have fallen asleep, where I died, in Messiah have perished. If we have, if we hope in Yeshua, if we hope in Yeshua, definitely life only. We are of all men, most to be pitied. But no, Yeshua the Messiah has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. This is the important message. If Messiah is not raised, then our faith is in vain. And see if we can uh, use the the resurrection of Messiah is important because it validates his message. This is the first point. The resurrection of Messiah is important because it validates his ministry. Everything that Jesus taught, everything that Jesus said was based on the fact that his message was for eternal life. He came and he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believes in me, although he's dead, he will rise again. John 3, 16, God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. It means a life that goes beyond the tomb. Now, Jesus had many enemies, right? And if they would have wanted to deny and destroy Jesus' message, the only thing they have to do is show the body of Jesus. Today, we go to Jerusalem, and I go to Jerusalem several times a year. And I can go to the to one side or another side, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the Garden Tomb, and it, they're all empty. No matter where the place is, and we don't know where the place was, but whatever tomb it was, it is empty. He's not there. <laughs> That's the foundation of our faith. Now, for those who want to destroy the message of Jesus, the only thing they have to do is say, okay, this is the body. You know, this is him. This is the one who was crucified, and he's still dead. Now, he did say, I am the resurrection. How come he, if he says that I'm the resurrection, and he's still dead? Let me put, put it bluntly. Jesus would have been just another mystic. Jesus would have been another, another fool. If he would have proclaimed something that he couldn't, he couldn't sustain. Jesus would have, perhaps we would never hear the name Jesus had he remained in the tomb. But no, he is risen. Therefore, the message of, of Jesus is based on the fact that he rose from the death and the resurrection of Jesus is the strongest argument for his message. You take away the resurrection of Yeshua and we would have never heard of the Beatitudes. We would have never heard of the miracles. We wouldn't even hear the name Jesus if he had not been raised from the dead. But let me go to another point. And the second thing I want to say is that the, the message of Yeshua is important because it shows the justice of God. The resurrection of Yeshua is important because it shows the justice of God. Now, what do we mean by that? It means that we are rejoicing in the fact that he rose from the dead. We, re we rejoice in the fact that he rose from the dead. And Jesus was a sinless man, and we know that. The Bible says that 
he committed no sin. He was uh, the Lamb of God who died for our sins. And as you know, the Lamb that we're offering the altar had to be spotless and blameless. Jesus was a sinless man. A man who was empowered to act in behalf of the Father. He was God incarnate. The Bible says that no evil could be found in him. Even those who wanted to condemn him, they would say, I found no wrong in this man. Now, if Jesus would have remained in the tomb, it would have been God's greatest injustice. If it's only in the light of the resurrection that the message of the one dying for us makes sense. The Bible says in the words of the Apostle Paul, he who knew no sin was made sin for us that we may find righteousness of God in him. The resurrection of Yeshua speaks louder than a thousand books of theology. It speaks louder than anything else. And it tells us that God has the final word. If Jesus would have remained on the tomb, it would be God's greatest injustice. Because if a sinless man is put to death by evil men and God doesn't have the power to raise him from the dead, then where is the power of God? But no, he rose from the dead. And that is what gives us credibility on the power of God. First of all, shows that, they, they, that Yeshua and the Father are one, the oneness and the unity of God. Because by the power of the Father, Jesus is raised from the dead. In the light of all the injustice that there is in the world, we have this hope. God has the final word. Yeah, we're going through coronavirus. We're going through time of trials and tribulation. We're going through a time that, you know, it's very difficult. We're staying at home and we read and we work. But, our, you know, our children cannot go out. And those who live in apartments in New York, I just pity them. And thank goodness I live in Virginia Beach. We have a wonderful house. We can ride the bicycle to the beach. But it's difficult. You can't go anywhere. I, I can't see my grandchildren who live just 10 minutes away from me. But you know what? God is in control. God has the final word God is in control and the fact that Jesus rose from the death tells me again gives me the assurance that God is in control but let's go to another point the resurrection of Yeshua gave power to the disciples and to the congregation we saw in first place that uh, the resurrection of Yeshua gives credibility of Yeshua and what he taught. Second, that the resurrection of Yeshua shows that God is in control. In third place, we want to talk about the resurrection of Yeshua gave power to the disciples and to the congregation. What we mean by that is that the Bible says that after the, the, the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus, he was put on a tomb. And the disciples all ran scared. They said, well, this happened to our master who was sinless. What's going to happen to us? So they were all locked up in a room and they are afraid. They don't know what's going to happen with them. And they thought, you know, we had put our hopes in Yeshua and we had... We had hoped that he was the Messiah of Israel who was going to restore Israel to its former glory. And now all that we believed on him, you know, is, is, is in a tomb. But no, he rose. And he appeared to, to the woman who went early uh, to the tomb to find Yeshua. And they see, they see that the tomb is empty and the linen with which they wrapped the body is well wrapped in one place. And they saw an angel, and the angel said to the woman, why do you look among the dead, the one who is alive? And the woman didn't know what to believe. 
So some of them run to the disciples and, and Mary Magdalene is staying in the garden and she still thinks that somebody stole the body of Yeshua. And there she is crying, trying to find the body of, 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 of the Lord that, that, that he believed in. Then he, he appears to her. You say, what? Why, why so hard to believe? Everything that I said, didn't I raise Lazarus? Didn't I raise other people? Do you think I don't have the power? So they went to the disciples and they were all in the room. And then Peter and John, they run. And what do they find? They find that the message that was said by the angels to the woman was true. And they run back and they don't know what to believe. And they share with the others, the Lord is risen. And then the Bible said the two disciples are walking in the road to Emmaus. And then Jesus walks next to them. And he talks to them. Oh, I would have loved to be a fly in the wall to listen to that conversation. But Jesus says, oh, you hard to understand and believe. Didn't Moses and the prophets speak about the death and resurrection of Messiah? Then he disappeared and they realized, yes, it is the recent Messiah. And when the, the disciples are scared there in a room, he appears to them and says, Shalom, peace be unto you. And say, Whoa, it is true. He is alive. And it's the living Yeshua, the resurrected Messiah, that changed the disciples into a group of, from a group of powerless men. To a group of powerful men who from that day on, they listened to Yeshua for 40 days. Can you believe that? It wasn't like Jesus resurrected from the dead and then he ascended to heaven and nobody saw him. No, the apostle Paul says in the passage that we read in 1 Corinthians that he appeared to the 12, he appeared to Jacob. Then he appeared to 400 people Then he met when in Galilee. And Peter has an encounter with Yeshua. And they were fishing. And Yeshua said, give me something to eat. It is him. It is the Lord. Then he said, let's meet again in the Mount of Olives. And from there, he ascended to heaven. And he gave the great commission. Go and preach this gospel to all the nations. And what did they do? They became the powerful, bold messengers of the recent Messiah. Now, do you think that if Yeshua would have been dead, they would have been as bold enough as to go and go into the temple and preach? And you can see that the book of Acts says that uh, uh, John and Peter, they went to the temple and there they preach every day to the point that they are taking prisoners and they are brought before the Sanhedrin. And they say, you know what, you cannot... You're not going to make us stop preaching? Excuse me. Are you daring us? And Peter said, yeah. Yes. We're not going to stop preaching Yeshua, the Messiah. Now, we know that some of them died as martyrs for their faith. Do you think that anyone would have died for a lie? Somebody would have become a martyr for a myth that it wasn't real? No, it was the recent Messiah that transformed the disciples into the powerful messengers. And the message went throughout the world, to the four corners of the world. And I can, I can assure you, there's hardly a place in the whole world that hasn't heard the name Jesus. Doesn't mean that they have believed, but at least they have heard the name of Jesus. Now, it is the resurrection of Yeshua that also gives power to the church, the kehilat, the congregation. Now, I want you to understand one thing. Our congregation, Sar Adonai, as, may, as, as well as any other congregation, is not founded on the fact that we observed the Jewish holidays. Our congregation is not founded on the fact that we wear kippah or we say the Jewish prayer. Our congregation is founded on the fact that Yeshua is risen. And it's that risen Messiah 
that gives us the power to continue preaching. And yes, we have opposition. I got opposition wherever I go. I'm perhaps the most uh, hated person in Brooklyn. I don't know. I used to be the most hated person in Brooklyn to the point that, you know, they accused me of everything because I was preaching. Did that stop me? No. Not because I have a power. No. The Lord Yeshua said, stay there. Stay until I give you the power. And then he gave the power of the Ruach HaKodesh and the power of the Ruach HaKodesh given by the resurrected Messiah is what gives us the power to do and preach and say, listen, whatever we do, we don't do it based on our own ability. It's not done in our own wisdom. It is done by the power that we received. The power of the reason. The Apostle Paul writes to the Philippians and said, I want to know him more. And I want to receive more of the power of his resurrection. That's one thing that we don't hear enough. We have a lot of beautiful messianic songs. But how many of them actually talk about the resurrection? We talk about the love. We talk that he died on the cross. And you know what? So many times we leave Yeshua on the cross. Forgetting that the cross is not the symbol of our faith. I always say that, you know, somebody made the cross the symbol of our faith. The symbol of my faith is not the cross. It's the empty tomb. Because it is the empty tomb that gives meaning to what I believe. We have a final, a final thought. And the final thought is that the resurrection of Yeshua gives us the assurance of our salvation. Yeshua died for our sins. And he died for our sins. So we would have eternal life. Now, if he would have died for our sins and everything is just, uh, if, when we go, we, we die and we enjoy fellowship here and then the tomb is the end of everything. The Apostle Paul says, if we don't believe that we are saved through faith in Yeshua, because he has the power to save us, and not only here, but give us eternal life, save from... Save from what? Save from our sins. In order to what? In order to be forgiven. Yes. And what does that do? If I'm forgiven, that allows me to have fellowship with God and have the right to enjoy eternal life. Yeshua said, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. So where I am, you can be there also with me. Now, he didn't say you are forgiven, therefore you enjoy forgiveness until the moment you die. No. You enjoy forgiveness of your sins because I pay the price for your sins that you may have eternal life. And eternal life is not a life that ends in the tomb. Our body may stay there, there, but my soul is one with the Lord. That's the message we preach. That's the hope that we have. That's what the Apostle Paul says so clearly. If, if this is not what we believe in, our faith is meaningless. Our faith is in vain, but no, he ends by saying, no, Yeshua the Messiah is risen. And only, not only he is risen, but he is the first of all of us who will rise again. Isn't that wonderful? There will be a time when I will see my father and my mother again. Because they died having put their faith in Yeshua the Messiah. Their sins were forgiven. And that bought them a ticket into the presence of God. Yeshua died for our sins. And his resurrection gives me the assurance of my salvation. So what's the end message of this? What do we take from this? The message is that it's the same message that was given at the tomb. By the angels to the woman. What's the message? And the message of the angel to the woman. When they ran to the tomb. On that first day of the week. Yom Rishon. And they went there to just to. You know anoint and prepare the body for the burial. And they saw. That they had no body. And the angel said. Believe. 
The second thing is go and tell the disciples. A third rejoice. So we are urged to do the same thing. Based on the fact that Christ is risen, Yeshua the Messiah rose from the death, we got to believe, we got to share, and we have to rejoice. This is the foundation of our faith. Thank goodness Yeshua is risen. And you tell me what the most wonderful day of the year is not Christmas, it's not even my birthday. The most wonderful day for me is the day when I remember that Yeshua rose from the dead and because he lives, I shall live forever. What about you? Have you put your confidence in Yeshua? Do you think that all that we do is just wear a kippah and sing Hebrew song? Is, it, is that the end of it? No, 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 all that. It's just an outward manifestation of what we have inside. And what we have inside is that faith that Yeshua died for my sins, according to the scriptures, that he rose from the dead, giving me the assurance of eternal life. Do you have that assurance? Do you have that certainty? I pray that as we think and focus our attention on the resurrection of Yeshua the Messiah, that you will also have the assurance that because he lives, you shall also live. God bless you. Have a wonderful Shabbat.